Jeffrey Combs. Good morning, everyone. I am in Saddlebrook, New Jersey, preparing for tomorrow's More Heart Than Talent event with Diane Hunt. Diane, thank you for hosting this event. I'll be delivering content on what it really means to raise your level of consciousness. Now, consciousness is synonymous with awareness. If you live a component of your life or most of your life in anxiety, fear, and doubt, I'll be covering tomorrow how to separate your feelings from the events that shape them, the real essence of what it means to let go. Now, letting go is a skill that very few people understand. I'm a self-proclaimed expert on this topic. I've been a success coach mentor for 21 years. I've coached over 12,000 clients and devoted 60,000 hours to one-on-one coaching. That is six times the 10,000-hour habit. So if you're watching this content today, here's some insight for you on what letting go means. Letting go means being able to localize, understand, and be able to realize why you do what you do. So if your communication style is a communication style that says, "Uh uh-huh, yeah, okay, probably, sure, well, you're speaking in a very, very non-committed communication style. Clarity will allow you to separate your feelings from the events. So awareness and consciousness is synonymous with no, K-N-O-W, not N-O. So when you are in the present, when you are in the now, when you're in the no, what it means is you're aware. And when you're able to separate your feelings from events that are repressed or unresolved, now you're raising your level of consciousness. But if you're walking around the planet saying, I get in my own way, I don't understand why I do what I do, this always happens to me. If you're worried about going into an event and you walk straight to the food, then that's a a direct reflection of what you're repressed. It's very common for people to tell themselves stories like, I'm not sure if I can put myself out there. Well, where where is out there? What does out there actually mean? Well, out there is not outside of your body. Out there is really in here. So in here, that is consciousness. Now, if if you are overwhelmed, if you are anxious, if you live in fear and doubt, then you've completely cut yourself off from the web of consciousness. The web of consciousness is all the content that the universe has for you. And when you're able to tap in into a place called no, now you're able to access content that you've been shut off from. So this will explain the phenomenon of why people who are mathematical geniuses or people who just understand history, people who have great recall. It's not, that, it's not that they're brilliant, it's that they're tapped in. Now, I live in that world called consciousness, and I've been in it since I was four years old, but I also went in and out of it for the first 30 years of my life. When I got clean and sober at 31, I started to really address the events that had shaped my feelings. I started to address the inner child that had been broken and started to practice the let go process. Over a six-year period, I went from being financially destitute to being a self-made millionaire. Now, any one of you watching this content today can be that person right now. So this isn't about being a millionaire. This is about being conscious. The more conscious you are, the more you are now available and open to receive. The more conscious you are, you're able to attract your reality, people in situations that would foster your purpose, meaning, and cause. But if you're not purpose-driven, not meaning-driven, and you don't really understand why you own a business, then you'll just go up the down staircase seeking freedom and travel and situations that don't really have any clarity. As you start to become clear with who I am, that's you, I. So as you start to connect with I, that means means esteem. As you start to become esteem, which esteem means regard for self without feeling selfish. So as you start to focus on becoming your best you, that means you're able to let go of anxieties, fear, and doubts that no longer serve you. It's not a how do I state, it's an I am state. And it starts with a breath, a longer breath cycle. Most of society lives in a very short breath cycle. So this is your left brain. This is the neocortex of your left brain. That's your analytical egoic mind. That's the brain of reason, the brain that wants to make sense, the brain that wants to be in control. That is your IQ. Your EQ, which is your ability to tap into your extrasensory perception, your ability to intuit, that comes from your limbic brain, which is actually right back here. It's called the right brain, but it's not even on the right sector. 
Now, within your left brain is also your reptilian brain. That's the brain that sees lions and tigers. That's the brain that doesn't allow you to get on an airplane because you're afraid you'll be out of control. Your left brain wants to control outcomes. Your right brain can create outcomes. The more right-brained you are, or the more you bring both your hemispheres, your brains together, now you can be in a place called one with. So esteem has no shape or form. Power has no shape or form. But if you're in any type of force, force has to have an adversary. Force is a win-lose dichotomy, a black and white world where there's a winner and a loser. Your objective daily is to be your best without being critical. Now you can be objective, you can be honest, you can be open without being critical. Once you tap in your, tap in your critical advisor, now you're going to talk yourself out of the opportunities that bestow you. You talk yourself out of your network marketing business, you talk yourself out of real estate, you talk yourself out of internet marketing, branding, being a man or a woman of influence and affluence. As you begin to separate your feelings from the events, now you can step into a place called esteem. Esteem is love, love self, love others, love universe, love animals, love who I am, love what I'm being, love other people. Now this doesn't mean that you're this doesn't mean you're just walking around the planet airy fairy, but in the three forms of love, there's love, there's loving, and there's lovable. As you become lovable, then you can spread love. But it's challenging to spread love when you're not lovable. And this is why we'll attract the same situations over and over. This is where the passive aggressive perpetrators show up, the people who disappoint us, and we actually set ourselves up for disappointment, not really understanding the payoff that we derive by being emotionally addicted. One of those challenging situations that I encounter when I coach my clients is that many of them want to wrestle with this fact that I don't want to be an addict. I can't believe I do this. Well, you, it's your responsibility to understand the payoff you derive by being emotionally overwhelmed. And I'm not talking about a positive payoff or a negative payoff, that the payoff you create consistently by being emotionally addicted to a set of feelings. The payoff that an addict creates is they get to avoid success. They avoid responsibility. They avoid failure failing, which keeps them in a neurological behavior based on a set of conditions that they don't understand why they do what they do. Now, when you start to understand the events that shape your feelings, and this is what I'll be covering in tomorrow's content. Tomorrow's content in Saddlebrook, New Jersey will be very unique. Joe D. Bianca, one of my all-time best students, will be there along with Diane Hughes Hunt, and I'll be calling on them both to share some of their content on how they've been breaking through in the last three to five years. Now, this process of recovery is a one day at a time process. When I'm speaking of recovery, I'm not talking about drugs and alcohol. That's another byproduct. I'm talking about recovering from your emotions. If you continue to perpetuate the same set of emotions over and over and create the same result, you are an addict. It means you're addicted to a set of feelings based on unresolved issues that your body continues to repress because you don't understand why you do what you do. So I'll be breaking down this t content tomorrow in a very relaxed forum in an intimate setting. So if you're watching this content today, I'm in Saddlebrook, New Jersey. If you want to come and see me speak live, I'll be there from 9 until 4. I'll be back on November 10th in, no in Terrytown, New Jersey. I'll also be in Philadelphia on October 20th. Jeffrey Combs, President and Founder, Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated. And if you're seeking a free 20-minute coaching evaluation, you can send me a Facebook message. I'll return it with your phone number, and I'll return your message immediately. And there is a link here that will show you where the event is being held and how you can register or you can show up at the door. Thank you very much for you being you. You have a great day.